After watching this video, you should be able to describe the basic principles of vector cardiography and the major cardiac vectors of the QRS complex generated during ventricular depolarization. Now remember, during the cardiac cycle, the heart generates electrical forces which can be measured with electrodes placed on the surface of the body. These forces can be represented at any given instant in time by a vector that has both a magnitude and direction. These cardiac vectors are three-dimensional vectors, so we can only represent their projections or shadows on a two-dimensional plane. The two planes we can illustrate the projections of the cardiac vector are the frontal plane and the transverse plane. So for any given lead, the perpendicular lead represents the isoelectric line. As depolarization spreads towards the positive pole side of the isoelectric line, that's a positive recording. If the depolarization spreads on the negative pole side of the isoelectric line, that's a negative recording. And if we're on the isoelectric line, then it's zero. Okay, so let's review the frontal plane. And remember, frontal plane is superior up top, inferior, and then left and right. And we have our bipolar limb leads, leads one, two, and three. And remember that they're all 60 degrees from each other because they're derived from that Eindhoven's triangle, which is an equilateral triangle. And then we have the unipolar leads, AVL, AVF, and AVR. And they're all 60 degrees from each other, too. And they have their perpendicular pairs with the bipolar leads. In the transverse plane, we have anterior, posterior, and left and right. And we want to remember that V1 and V2 are rightward anterior leads. And as we move to V3, V4, V5, and V6, we're going towards the left and posterior. And we can see that V2 is perpendicular to V6, and V1 is perpendicular to V5. So now we're going to look at the ventricular depolarization process that generates our QRS complex, and this will be the basis of our QRS vector cardiogram loop. So we're going to have the main vector forces be divided into two major forces, the interventricular septum forces and the ventricular free wall forces. So the interventricular septal forces are in the orientation right, anterior, and we're going to write here inferior, although they can be superior as well. And this spread of depolarization comes off the left bundle branch. There's arborizations that are coming off the left bundle branch that spread the depolarization this way. And that's an important consideration when we look at left bundle branch blocks we lose this orientation because of the lack of the spread off the left bundle branch. Now for the ventricular free wall depolarizations, remember we have a left and right ventricle, so we need to consider what those orientations look like. For the left ventricle, it's spreading towards the left, posterior, and we're going to write here inferior, although there is some variability with that, and that forms the basis of looking at the mean QRS axis in the frontal plane. The right ventricle it's spreading in the rightward, anterior, and superior direction. So when we're looking at the net vector forces for the ventricular free wall, they're generally going to be skewed towards the left ventricle because the left ventricle is so much more massive, and therefore it electrically is dominant over the right ventricle. Now, as we're going to see in certain types of disorders, we could unmask the right ventricle depolarization from the left, for example, in the right bundle branch block, or the right ventricle forces can be bigger in cases of right ventricular hypertrophy. Now, what we don't have shown here are the basal forces, the terminal part of the QRS complex, the basal parts of the ventricle and septum. Uh, they're generally in the rightward and posterior orientation, but we're not going to discuss those here as these are the main two vector forces that help us really understand the QRS complex. So what we need to do next is to put these forces onto the frontal and transverse planes and generate our QRS vector cardiogram loops and then we can predict what the QRS complexes should look like in some of the key leads. And that concludes this video on vector cardiography and the QRS vector forces.